Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, as we are doing today, and it will be available in our show archives for you to watch later at your convenience. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the uh, topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for anyone who's here, who, those of you who are here that are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar to your state library, whatever state library. Uh, so we provide services and training and resources to all sorts of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, whatever. Really our only criteria is that something to do with libraries. <clears throat> um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we bring in guest speakers from outside the Library Commission sometimes, but we also have our own commission staff that do presentations for us, and that is what we have today. Uh, joining me this morning is Sally Snyder, who is our coordinator of Children and Young Adult Library Services here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Good morning, Sally. Hello. You Hello. said that whole long title pretty well. I did well. I've got it up on my other screen here. I cheated. <laughs> I can never remember the whole thing off the top of my head. <laughs> um, and Sally joins us at the end of the year for uh, three of her regular annual sessions. I guess we'll say. Um, <clears throat> She does a session on Best New Children's Books of the previous year, Best New Children's Books of 2023, Best New Teen Reads of 2023, and um, today we're talking about summer reading um, program for next year. Uh, so wrapping up 2023 and then starting up 2024. So if you're looking for some of Sally's sessions, you always look for them every year. Um, she did the Best New Children's Book one on November 22nd. The recording is available. Today, we're talking about the Summer Reading Program 2024, Adventure Begins at Your Library. And then if you're looking for the Best New Teen Reads of 2023, she'll be doing that on January 24th, um, next month. So I'm still reading like crazy for that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can register for that one if you want to. Um, but today we're going to talk about summer reading, and I'm going to hand it over um, to you, Sally, to uh, tell us um, about all the new, you know, show us where your uh, list is here and tell us about all the new books. Great. First, I want to show you where the handout is available right now. If you want to go there and print it off now before I get started, or if you want to wait till later, that's up to you. But you can all see my the Nebraska Library Commission webpage, right? Yep, yep. I'm going to type in handouts and look how it pops up right there, handouts. And then we go here, Nebraska Library Commission handouts. I tell other people here, you can use that for your stuff too, but nobody does. I think that it's all me. It's all stuff yep. for me. And I'm okay with that. But if, one, if somebody else wants to come in there too, that's fine. So just click on Nebraska Library Commission handouts and you'll see the list here. It goes way back a ways, but if you want to see something old, you're welcome to, but the most recent things are here at the top. So it says 2023 Encompass Live 2024 SRP Adventure Begins. So you click on that and there's the handout. And I think it's eight pages. Yes, eight pages. So and I put some of the artwork from that theme right there on the page so you can have a look at that. And that's where that is. Oh, yeah. yeah, so go ahead and, and click on that. Um, go there if you want to right now. You can download that list. We will also have a link to that handouts page when the recording, the archive goes up to for the show. So you'll be able to um, click there very quickly to get to this. And you'll also see my slideshow of the book cover. So if you want to go back and look at that and say, which one was it I liked so much? And, and then you'll find out because here's the book covers. And I'm just going to start the wait for it. Oh, I always do go it down. To, if you go to slideshow, there you go. Perfect. And uh, before we start going through the slideshow, while people are printing off the list, if they're doing that, I just have a few things I always say. And 
uh, first off, the books on this list are ones that I received, we received here at the Library Commission because the Library Commission gets review books from a number of publishers, not all books and not everybody, but quite a few. There are also books that I sought out because I looked at the library, the public library here, and also I bought a few because I wanted to have them for the list. And then I'll put them in the book giveaway so everything works out fine. If your favorite book is not on this list, it's because I didn't run into it. These books are, for the most part, new, either 2022, a few of them, or 2023 publication dates. That's because the book list with the manual had, uh, is, they're just a little bit older because it took time to get the manual all together and things. So I try to concentrate on newer books that probably aren't on that list. So you can look at that list and my list and really have so, too many books to buy, but you get to make your choices. The other thing is I divide these into kind of general categories like picture books and beginning readers. And these are all just my kind of way of dividing them out. And just because I say books for like grades two to five doesn't mean that that's a strict thing. That's just a general look at those type of books. So we all know that kids read at different levels and different speeds and every kid is an individual. So I'm not trying to force anybody into a certain batch of books. I'm just trying to make them available to you in a way that makes sense. So you get some picture books and some of these and some of those. And that's the point of that. The other thing is, many of you know, I have a blurb list because we know this show would go three hours if I just talked about them off the cuff because I don't like to stop. So this will keep me on task and it has the pertinent points I wanna make about each book so that you can find out why I think it's a possibility for your library. And everybody knows their community a whole lot better than I do. So you know what books are in your collection right now and you also know what things will appeal to the kids who are coming into the library and maybe something that will maybe draw somebody in if you're lucky. So let's get started on fiction picture books. Tim loves exploring outside, observing, collecting, and writing about it in his journal. One afternoon, he wanted to share with his father what he had observed, but his father was still busy, so Tim waited. His father's working from home. Finally, he went up to the attic to look through his father's journals and scrapbooks. When he fell asleep up there, he and his father had some amazing adventures in his dreams. He recorded them when he woke up. The next day, they explored nature together. And I meant to say that any book I found that had the word adventure in the title or subtitle, boom, I read that right away. So you'll see this pop up a number of times because that's, that's a key notation. Worm goes on a journey or an adventure around the garden to prove to himself that he is more than just a worm. He encounters other creatures who tell him what they do. By the end of the book, the worm and the reader realize the value of all creatures, and the worm helped everything in the garden grow. Not bad for just a worm. And I love the artwork, how it's, it's um, designed, glued down to the page and then photographs. It's really amazing art. Lily is devastated when her mother tells her they must move to Taiwan to take care of her ama. That Taiwan was her mother's home, but not Lily's. All Lily can think about is everything and everyone she will miss. This is her reluctant adventure to a new country. She resists everything at first. Family members she didn't know, different food, language, school, modes of travel, and more. Slowly, Lily begins to embrace her new friends and the Taiwan culture. Finally, Taiwan is both Lily and her mother's home. Evergreen is afraid of lots of things, but when her mother asks her to go take an acorn full of soup to Granny Oak on the other side of the forest, she knows she must go. Granny is very sick and Mama can't go because she must make a different soup for Auntie Mabel. Evergreen has quite an adventure through the forest. She encounters others who need help, some who are dangerous, and almost everyone thinks the soup smells delicious and wants to have some. Evergreen must not lose even one drop. When she completes her task, she feels much braver. She even accepts, accepts a quick ride home from the hawk that she had helped earlier. But now she needs to take soup to Auntie Maple and a thunderstorm is beginning. Thunderstorms are her very worst fear. I hope she can do it. This 
the third book about Una, the mermaid. Una, her sea otter friend Otto, and a little sea turtle adventure to the Arctic to return a baby beluga whale to her family. They encounter bad weather and lose the compass Una had made for the trip. Still, they get some help from an Arctic mermaid, Siku, who asks animals and people for guidance. Finally, they find her parents, and now Una has a new friend. Maps are part of having an adventure, so this is a fictional story that gives good basic information about maps. Zane sends his friend Anna an invitation to visit his house, and he included a map showing how to get there. This prompts Anna and her dad to discuss maps and how they are used. They draw a few maps themselves, sharing them with each other. When Anna gets to Zane's house, they make more maps. And at the back of the book is a, a, a two-page spread about how to make your own map to help kids who are interested in that. Excuse me. Set in Tehran, Samira gets to go with her grandmother, Mama Shamsi, to the market today for the first time. Samira loves her grandma's chador, which is what she wears whenever she's going outside. A little anxious about the market, Samira wants to hide in the chador with her grandmother so she won't get lost. Each suggestion on her back, behind her, by her belly, makes Mama Shamsi laugh and claim they will look like a turtle or a mule. But no worries, when they reach the market, Grandma replies to Samira's question of getting lost with, you'll use your eyes and your ears, even your nose too, to explore this world and learn what's around you. And they hold hands. This, an extinct volcano in the rainforest has a complete ecosystem in its crater. Ratty and his friends live in the crater and he is one of the largest animals there due to their isolation. One day, Ratty climbs so high to get a mango that he can see over the edge of the crater to the world beyond. It must be wonderful out there. He finds a way through an underground river to leave the crater, and he is on his way to what he believes will be an even better life. But he found some inhospitable places, and then he ended up on a big green creature who invited him to dinner. He didn't know he was going to be the dinner. His friends, the bats, arrive just in time to snatch him out of the mouth of a crocodile, and they take him home. Ready asked the bats to do that because no more adventures for him. There are four pages at the back of the book that show Mount Osabi in Papua New Guinea where Ready lived. An expedition visited it in 2009 and found this ecosystem and the fact that the rats were very much larger than any other rats in the world because they had no competition. So a little bit of his, uh, facts and a little bit of fun. Fiction based on the author's experience. In Vietnam, Mai and her mother and her father loved to play the crocodile game, chomp, chomp. One day, her father leaves to find a new home for them in the United States. Mai and her mother wait, getting letters from him, until finally it is time for them to secretly leave. They are going to find Papa. They spend several days on a boat with little food or water. Then they are in a refugee camp for a while, but bringing the letters that they had received from Papa, the people there help to find him. When they arrive in America, a man with a mustache, mustache comes up to them, and Maya is scared. Then the man makes his hands do the chomp, chomp, and she knows it's her papa, and they found their new home. Alice was fed up with winter and wanted to go somewhere warm and wonderful. A nearby book rustles its pages, and she reads, and she goes into the illustrations. First, a warm, colorful land of birds and plants. But when it begins to rain, she turns the page and ends up in a desert. Next, the sea, then the sky, and finally home again. It was quite an adventurous day. The boy is unsettled by the size of the universe and it makes it hard for him to go to sleep at night. One day, his father takes him in, her, in his pickup truck out to the desert to shake hands with the universe. They look around as they go, exploring and enjoying the flowers, the sand, the smells. They build a fire carefully sing songs, and watch the sunset. As they get cozy in the bed of the truck, they talk about the stars and name all of them they can, like the Coyote Cluster and the Beetle Nebula. His father tells him that stars and people are made of energy. The next night at home, the boy goes right to sleep. Imagine my cat doing this. I, I think he is an explorer at heart. One day, Fred the cat, who loves food, does not show up for dinner. As the girl says where he isn't, he isn't under the bed or at the neighbors. The illustrations show him driving a car, climbing a building, hanging on an airplane wing, 
obviously on an adventure. The next day, the girl frets and she draws lost cat posters, which blow away in the wind. The cat is relaxing at the beach. As the days go by, the girl loses hope. A two-page spread shows photos of the cat's trip. Finally, the cat jumps out of an airplane and parachutes to the ground. But now he is in the desert and is truly lost. Then a spaceship picks him up, retrieves one of the posters floating in outer space, and takes him home, just in time for dinner. Kevin and his friends notice a ladder leading up to somewhere. While a debate on who should go first is held, Kevin says, I will go first, and he begins to climb. Fox tells Gorilla they should be first because maybe there's a strawberry donut up there. Kevin arrives alone at the top first, and not a problem, until he sees a huge white mouse. Then he happily welcomes his friends to the top. Together, they play with the white mouse, and they get some strawberry donuts. The ins and outs of always being first, and the value of new and old friends. This is, about, I think, the third or fourth book about Gilbert the Goblin. In this one, he is irked about how much people want to find a Yeti. After all, goblins are quite secretive and masters of disguise. So Gilbert's next adventure is to go to the frozen tundra on the mountain and show how easy it is to find one. He has a bit of trouble. After accidentally causing a snow slide, he lands in there marked with a sign, Secret Yeti Hideout. Will he survive? Mm. I don't know. Some picture book nonfiction. I meant to say, if there are um, people who, as I talk about books, have had a, a good or bad experience with these books and reading them to children, please speak up and let me know, let everybody know, because I read them, I share them with my great niece, some of them, but um, I don't really have an, the audience that these books are written for. So it's good to get input from people who are listening. Thank you. Yeah, if anybody has any um, thoughts or ideas or um, uh, suggestions, if you want to type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I will read that off to Sally for you. No problem. Thank you. Okay, so sometimes I take a little bit of a stretch with the theme, but this was a wonderful book. Um, Michelle Nichols played Lieutenant Uhura on the original Star Trek TV series, and the crew shared weekly adventures exploring the universe and encountering new people and problems. But Nichelle had already decided to quit the series since her character's part kept getting cut back when one person convinced her to continue in the part, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He told her that she represented all black people in a future that showed everyone contributing equally to a shared goal. And how he, he said, you don't understand how valuable that is. The front flap says, it reminds, that, reminds us of the importance of perseverance and the power of representation in storytelling. Well, I love giraffes. People probably know that. So when I saw this book, look, it's the adventurous life of the first giraffologist, which I didn't know that was a word. Anna Enos Dag, born in 1933, loved giraffes since she saw one in Chicago at the zoo when she was four. She tried to find a book or information about them, but nothing existed. She was laughed at when she tried to study giraffes at the university. She decided to go to Africa in order to learn about them, and she was laughed at again. She wrote to many national parks and game reserves, finally receiving an offer to stay at the Fleur de Lis Ranch in South Africa with more than 100 free roaming giraffes. She appreciated this opportunity, but in the author's note at the back, the author mentions that Dr. Day states, in her, neg states her negative view of apartheid in her memoir, Pursuing Giraffe, a 1950s Adventure. The back matter also notes that in 1956, Anne was the first Western person to study wild animal behavior in Africa. Jane Goodall arrived in 1960. Go giraffes! <laughs> this is a beautiful book. Yoshi is a loggerhead turtle who was rescued in 1997 by a Japanese fishing ship. She was small and injured. They took her to Cape Town, South Africa and the Two Oceans Aquarium where she lived, healed and grew for 20 years. She did, began to grow restless and the aquarium staff guide decided to guide her to swim and swim to prepare for the ocean. She was released with a tracking device on December 16, 2017, and spent some time swimming north and south, and then one day set off across the Indian Ocean towards Australia, likely heading to her hatching beach. She led the researchers to a previously unknown loggerhead feeding ground. Her last transmission was from there in October of 2020. 
Beautiful illustrations show ocean life and, and the geography she likely encountered in the Indian Ocean. And the back of the book has a map of Yoshi's route home and additional information on loggerhead turtles. So she did have quite an, quite an experience. Now let's look at a few beginning readers. Well, I wonder what I did wrong here. I think I had this. Oh, I did something wrong. But anyway, this is like the fourth book about Sabrina Sue, and this is the first one I've read. And she is fascinated by the idea of flying because chickens really can't fly very well. So she does her research and she makes some plans and all the other barnyard animals are telling her, it's too dangerous, don't do it, don't go there, you'll, you'll get hurt. But she did, did good planning and she and her frog friend have a wonderful time and she considers going by parachute flying. Nat the cat takes a bath. Nat keeps saying that there's something wrong with the bath water. First, there aren't any bubbles, then there aren't any toys. And there's this and there's that, but really he's too afraid to get in the water until the rat comes along and jumps right in and splashes the cat. And then they both get in the in the tub and get clean and they're fine. So that was kind of an adventure for him because he had never wanted to go in the water until the rat showed him how. This book, this story starts with a, a look at what looks like a jungle. And in the distance, there's smoke coming up and there's a crashed plane. And then we see these girls who are playing around among the flowers and they're having some adventures. And at, towards the end of the story of their adventures, they hear a voice calling, girls, girls, lunch. And so we find out that they were playing in their imagination. They'd encountered little baby dragons and things like that. And now they go home for lunch. So you can go on an adventure anytime you want to just by using your imagination. A boy and his uncle have gotten new hiking shoes and a map and they go on a hike and they hike up to this lovely view, a nice big rock to sit on where they eat their snacks and look out and see how beautiful it is. And then they hike back home again, just in time for lunch because they're hungry again. Early chapter books. This is book three about two small to two, two small Tola. She has an older sister and a brother, and they all live with their grandmommy in an apartment in Lagos, Nigeria. Lately, they have heard of an illness in the world, and it soon makes its way to Nigeria. Everyone is to stay inside, so Tola's studious sister, Moji, goes to live with her teacher so she can keep up with her schoolwork. Her older brother, Dapo, 15, goes to live with his boss so he can continue fixing cars. It isn't long before grandmommy tells Tola the neighbor, the neighbor will take her to a house that needs a girl to clean and wash and scrub. Tola misses her family, but knows she is helping another family and earning money since Grandmommy is not allowed to be outside selling groundnuts. Tola has learned that she loves math and she looks for equations to do whenever she has time. One day at the new house, she sees the household papers and she looks at them for some math. Later, she realizes that the homeowner is being cheated by the diesel company. Her reward from the home homeowner is enough for Grandmommy to pay the rent for three years so Tola can go home and wait for the coronavirus to be long, to be gone. Two books so far about Shark Princess. Book one is titled just that, Shark Princess. Katana, a whale shark and self-proclaimed shark princess, the first ever, gives a crown to her best friend, Mac, who believes he is too dangerous. Lots of now loud sneezes due to allergies. He's too dangerous to be a princess. Katana announces that princesses adventure so they go to the sunken ship that Mac had found. When some poles fall on them, they are trapped. But Mac's sneezing frees him, and they find a way for him to help Katana. Good friends on an adventure. The second book, Reluctant, because crowds make her nervous, but Mac talks her into going with him to their first shark party. When they arrive, they meet lots of different kinds of sharks. But one deep ocean shark did not get an invitation. The shark princesses will go and bite her. On their adventure, they encounter some bioluminescent fish that have never they have never seen before. And then they find the ninja lantern shark named Adriana. She prefers to be alone and thanks them for the inv invitation and says goodbye. Back at the party, Katana explains that not everyone likes crowds and that's okay. At the back of the book, well, both of these books have um, information at the back of the book. 
They both have a page about how to draw sea creatures or, um, well, sea creatures to look for in the stories and then how to draw them. First, the blue, the, sorry, the whale shark that the princess is, and then the mako shark, which is what Mac is. And then they, they show some of the different sharks that were in the group. So that's that's two books so far in that series. I expect there'll be more. Lots of different books about stick and stone. This one, they're on the go, so they're on an adventure. It's a full color graphic novel and it contains two stories about the best friends. In their first adventure, they are going on a picnic with their friends, Acorn, Moss, and Beetle. But Beetle invited the bees. Bees are scary, Stone is afraid. Stone finally finds several things to be scared of, but especially the cave they are all going to explore. Spelunking is a fun word, but actually doing it is not. In the second story, they are going for a walk when a fast puppy runs by and grabs Stick. Stone thinks quickly to find a way to rescue Stick. This is the second book about Crimson Twill. The first one, she went to the city. This one, the friends she met in the city are coming to visit her house and they are the ones going on an adventure. She had several adventures planned for them, visit the rotten apple orchard, then the broom field, and finally croaking some frogs. But things don't go well. Applesauce exploded in the orchard, Wesley cut too much straw in the broom field and floated up into the air, and Mob got a large frog's croak right in the face and she started croaking herself. Then the giant in the hill woke up, oh my. It all turns out all right, and everyone had a great time, but they had some problems. <laughs> this is the fifth and final book in the Detective Gordon series. Detective Gordon is retired, but he still is active on occasion with um, police business. Helmer the Squirrel is very interested in police work, and he thinks he might go to police school. He is staying overnight at the police station while his parents are gone. Badger has reported strange noises during the night and it has a badly damaged garbage can. Buffy investigates and finds that someone or something very strong must have damaged the can. Gordon has just finished reading about trolls, so he thinks he's pretty sure it must be them. Buffy goes up the mountain to see if she can find any answers, but she sees three figures on the hill and then she is accidentally smashed flat by a rolling boulder. Her animal friends find her and take her back to the police station but Helmer is still working to solve the crime. He goes on up the mountain to a cave. He encounters a young troll and learns how they speak. He soon discovers that they are kind and friendly and just don't understand how things work that, with the other animals. They don't understand what a trash can is for or how it works or anything. Soon the troll family feels welcome and is eager to run the bakery for the tired pig family. And the pig family is very happy to have help. This is the second book about Plum. It's a sequel to Leave it to Plum. Each animal in their own travel case, several zoo animals travel with Keeper Lizzie to a school for a visit. Oops, the school is closed for a snow day. It is too dangerous to drive back to the zoo, so Lizzie and the custodian put their travel cases on a tarp in the gym. As soon as they leave, three white mice arrive and open up their cases with a paper clip. Plum wants everyone to stay in the gym, but the others all go exploring. Itch the name, heads to the library where he meets the professor, a tortoise. Itch jumps out the window into the snow when he hears that the university is just down the way. He wanted to learn more, but now he's stuck in the deep snow. When Plum gets to the library and finds out where Itch is, he jumps out the window to rescue him. But they are going to need more help for this rescue. The two of them aren't going to make it by themselves. I love that cat. That cat is great. <laughs> This is a full color graphic novel. Bat Cat is unique. He, he or they, they prefer they are half bat and half cat. So, hence the name. They prefer to be alone and they don't need anyone else. But a ghost moves in and is very chatty. Bat Cat goes to the island witch for help. She sends them all over the island to retrieve items needed for a spell to oust the ghost. Bat Cat has plenty of hard work and dangerous situations while trying to collect the items. And while doing that, the bats in the cavernous caves want them to be more bat-like, whereas the cats in the whistling graveyard want them to be more cat-like. They just want to go home. When they meet the griffins on Mount Morrow, and the griffins do not want to eat them, whew, they learn that being two things is fine because griffins are part lion and part eagle. They can be themselves, and that is just wonderful. 
and the ghost turns out to be more of a friend than a than a, a, a kinky companion so that's nice this is the second book about rover and speck and it's on the list but if you want to know what the first book is haha i sneakily put both of these in here and it, the first book isn't on the list but it's called this planet rocks in the splashdown the second book rover and speck look for life on another planet they will need flotation devices as this planet has lots of water. They encounter a huge creature that tries to swallow them, but they manage to escape and they get to an island where they find two spiky spikes named Stickle and Pickle. The creature has swallowed their brother, Ted. Rover and Speck go out to get swallowed by the creature and see if they can rescue Ted. These books are fun. The rovers do their jobs and support each other. And there are shapes at the back in the second book for the, to encourage readers to design their own sea creature, and in the first book, to design their own um, rover. Linty. Linty lives in a pocket of a pair of jeans in a drawer. It is peaceful and quiet, but still Linty has his daily routine. Exercise, sightseeing, there's blue everywhere, and a game of solo Marco Polo. But one day, he was unexpectedly, unexpectedly bounced all around. His owner had finally grown enough to wear the jeans. And all of a sudden, a new item was in the pocket, acorn. He never met anybody else before. Then lollipop, then more. At first, he's kind of frightened, but then he begins to really like having lots of different friends who have different interests. But then wash day comes, <clears throat> and everyone leaves the pocket except Linty. Will he ever see his friends again? And what will happen to Linty during wash day? Good question. Uh, this is the third book in the Cat and Cat Adventures series. It's a full color graphic novel. Squash and Ginny, the two cats there, are called to help Willow, a dragon. Important artifacts are missing and a strange pink slime is everywhere. Their quest leads them under Unibear City where they are captured and they find out that Mayor Baron is behind the theft of magical artifacts because he is draining their power and using it to power Unibear City. They managed to escape and thwart the mayor's plans. Now we'll go on to fiction for grades two to five or so. We can take a quick break. <laughs> he is stuck at home with his older sister, Derossi, who's 14, his younger sister, Juniper, and his parents due to a worldwide virus. Clay wanders the woods behind their home because he can be out and about by himself. And it's a relief to be alone and somewhere else. Then he encounters a lost dog, a magical dog. Over time, the boy and the dog explore the woods and Clay begins to realize the dog takes him on paths that he has never seen before and he never found by himself. Clay doesn't know it, but Elfinor, the dog, is one of the hunting dogs of the people under the mountain. During one adventure, Clay encounters an owl-headed boy, Amos, and they become friends, though it is forbidden by the owl-headed people to become friends with humans. Midsummer's Eve brings trouble and possible disaster when Clay and Durasi wander masked among the many magical people on this magical day. Clay, Amos, Durasi, and Elfinor may all be in great danger. There are two books so far about Harriet. The first book is just Harriet. After third grade, she is not looking forward to spending the summer with her grandmother on Marble Island. She loves Manu, her grandma, the B&B &B she runs, and the island, but usually she stays for a week or two, and this time it is for the whole summer. Her mom is expecting and needs complete bed rest. Her dad travels with his job, so it is best for her to stay with Manu. Harriet also has a bad habit of lying. They just pop out of her mouth unexpectedly, and also it's very hard for her to wait. She does help Nanu with the B&B, &B, takes the dog for walks, and cares for her cat, Matzo Ball. While cleaning out the old shed behind the B&B, &B, Harriet finds an old key and now has a mystery. What does it open? Book two, I almost turned the thing. In book two, Harriet is really working on not lying, but they do still occasionally pop out. Now the captain's prized binoculars are missing, and she doesn't believe that Harriet didn't take them. And she didn't. Harriet is on to a new mystery, who took the binoculars? She makes a new friend, Clarence, the younger brother of the town librarian. They get to work on the mystery. Harriet is learning a lot this summer over the two books. The damage that lies can do, being responsible involves hard work, 
first impressions of people can be wrong and the value of friends. I love books that include a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, always got to have a librarian. In. <laughs> this is the second book about the first cat in spades. It's also a full color graphic novel. When the queen of the moon eats poison soup, she and the first cat in space must travel to find an antidote. Meanwhile, Laws 4000 is searching for his friends. Bad guys try to stop one or another of them and, and more than once. Wacky fun as expected and crazy silliness abound in this book. You would be disappointed if it wasn't silly. Rylan and his former best friend Wilder are not really friends anymore, but when Wilder invites Rylan to join him, join him on a summer farming program in France, it just sounds like it could change. Just before they leave, Rylan finds out that his father, whom he hasn't seen in years, lives in Paris and would like to see him. Rylan isn't sure about that. He also isn't sure about this trip. Wilder ignores him. The work they do is tedious. The, ghosts, the goats they must milk like to bite, and there are pigeons and poop in one of the buildings. Still, he learns some things about himself and about people and must decide whether to meet up with his father or not. Eight from England, Sage in California. They are both 13 and their family swap houses for a spell during the summer. Each girl has some issues. Only child Sage is certain that her parents are planning to divorce. Middle child Allie is sick of being expected to give in since the family votes on everything and no one agrees with her choices, whether it's the movie they watch, the type of pizza, the TV programs, everything. And that gets old. The girls meet in England when Allie and her mom stay behind for a couple of days since their dog needed an operation. They bond and they soon have a plan in place for Sage to find out if her parents really are planning to divorce. It's quite an adventure to visit another country and live in somebody else's house. And their scheme may work or not. This is, this is like a fairy tale, but it's a new one, and it's written as though it came from long ago by the Irish author, Owen Colfer. That's how you pronounce his first name, Owen. A new fairy tale, oh, I said that. Prince Lear is forced to act as a quester knight in order to return to his former kingdom, eventually. He must rescue the damsel Stefan from the dragon Lasmarn. Likely he will die in the attempt. Oh. But Prince Lear is not what the dragon expected, and the three of them coexist rather peacefully on the island until Yusuper Delbane arrives to ascertain why isn't Lear dead yet. It's an interesting dynamic between Lear, Sethon, and Lars Mark, and who will survive the day once Delbane shows up. Another wonderful book based on the new kid. This is book three. It's time for the school trip. Students will be going to Alaska, Yellowstone, Paris, or on a civil rights trip. Jordan and most of his friends are going to Paris. A mix-up at the last minute means the teachers will not be going to their original destinations. The Paris trip gets Mr. Roche and Mr. Garner, not the French teacher, who will be going to Yellowstone. This continues the story that's been going along with microaggressions that are beginning to calm down some, amazement at a different country, having fun, and handling new things. Jordan is also grappling with whether he should continue at his current school or be the new kid again at art school. At dinner on their last day in Paris, they each talk about any revelations or surprises they experienced. During the story, periodically, Jordan asks, is touche or hors d'oeuvres or bon appetit or rendezvous, another French word that we always use, often without anyone replying to him. He's observant and it's a good way to point that out. Wonderful. Books three and four in the Once Upon a Tim series, the first book being, of course, Once Upon a Tim. In book three, Tim and his fellow knights are charged with retrieving the queen's golden fleece and coincidentally, the mystical protective amulet of Maryland that was in his pocket. They take the herring, a dilapidated ship, to sea and soon encounter sea monsters. When they finally reach the kingdom of Deacon, the queen there trades back the fleece, but has decided to keep the amulet. Now what? Readers looking for humor and adventure will find what they want here. Both titles also contain the, the occasional IQ boosters that's been in the series all along. This one has a cliffhanger ending. Thank goodness book four's out already. <laughs> Cliff, I mean, they are on the edge of a waterfall. They are going over. Like literally yeah. a cliffhanger. <laughs> Quest of Danger, 
A very last minute rescue from certain death has our knights in training embedded to the kingdom of Merlan. Their rescuer being Princess Piscina, a merperson. The king and queen want the knights to go to Atlantis to retrieve the great trident of Merlin. This will likely entail encountering the evil Prince Ruprecht and his minions. More danger and life-threatening events must be faced. While this story is resolved, there is an opening for more adventures to come. This is the first book in a new series, a, a spin-off of the Investigator series. It's a full-color graphic novel. Cilantro the Chameleon is given her first official assignment. Investigate the strange and confusing activities around an abandoned field office pursuit, special undercover investigations team. With her new partner, Monocle, Cilantro encounters a scarecrow observation unit, some sheep with a cause, unusual crop circles, and maybe aliens. And wacky situations will appeal to readers. The last page of the story indicates that the B team, Badgers, Bongo, and Marsha, will be the subjects of book, of book two in this series. From Badger to Worse comes out February 20th of next year. Full color graphic novel based on the author's webcomic. Monsters must live with humans away from the magical barrier that keeps them safe in order to find any special skills or abilities that they may have. So one day, Pebble's parents tell him that it's time to find a human family to live with outside their protected monster cave. He is reluctant, but he does find a home with Ren and her two fathers. Ren loves scary movies, so she is looking forward to being scared by Pebble. Pebble is out of his element and is scared to be in a new place with humans. They soon find friendship and have fun together. Readers will love learning about how life is with monsters and how Ren adapts to make Pebble feel welcome. But the reckoning day is fast approaching. If Pebble doesn't have a new special skill or ability, he will have to go home. Is it too late? Gilligan, or Gilly, a possum, assistant to Mayor Crawdaddy, a raccoon, is assigned to handle the issue of the lost Columbus and send him home. They live in Theodore Worth Park in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and a blizzard has just started blowing snow everywhere. Gilly joins the Earl of Sussex, a squirrel, trying to help Twigs, the Columbus, or as you can guess, a mammoth, a woolly mammoth. Twigs just appeared in the bog area of the park, and he doesn't have much to say, except that he doesn't want to go home. The group picks up a couple of children and an older man and continue to walk through the snow around the area, trying to avoid the three cavemen who somehow apparently followed Twigs to the park. When they all finally discover that a time vortex has created this situation, they hurry back to where Twigs was first found. Hopefully, they can return him to his own time. Adventure in the title again. Haven, the cat, loves her new, warm, comfortable home and being cared for by Mom Millie. But Mom Millie begins to feel sicker and sicker until Haven decides she must leave the house to find the neighbor man. Once outside, she doesn't know which way to go and ends up on an adventure with the help and guidance of a friendly fox. Will she find the neighbor? Will she find help for her, her Millie? We don't know until you read till the end. This is also a full color graphic novel. Clementine Fox and her friend Nubbin stow away in the basket on top of the sea turtle. Annabella is a sea turtle. Nubbin's older brother is taking Annabella to Clementine's Aunt Marnie, who lives on a nearby island. The vet recommended they go to her. They end up on the other side of the island and learn a lot about the care of animals and people's desire to live quietly in peace. And it turns out that um, Annabella is getting ready to lay eggs. This is a, 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 was a fun book. I think I'm particularly fond of it because I was reading it when I was in O'Hare Airport. <laughs> and this takes place completely in the O'Hare Airport. So that was really fun. Well, uh, flights are delayed due to a thunderstorm. So it opens with a misunderstanding at the security point, which sends rumors and confusion throughout the stranded passengers. It's kind of like how the game gossip warped whatever had been said in the beginning as you go around and things get kind of out of whack. And, Pretty soon people are saying what happened at the at the um this, the beginning point is is uh, completely different from what actually happened. There are 12 Asian American author, authors who each write a chapter creating an interconnected story. Racism and microaggressions are challenged most mostly peacefully by other Asian Americans and white people, often together, calmly and gently, pointing it out. That is racist. I'll say to someone particularly one lady who um, shows up again and again in the stories. 
She's a white woman with particular opinions, and she's not thinking about what she's saying. Some of the authors are Linda Sue Park, Erin Entrada Kelly, Grace Lynn, Helen Ho, Christina Surntavad, and Susan Tan, all edited by Ellen Lowe. Ellen Oh, sorry. This was um, published last year, but it's still a great adventure. Brother and sister Violet and Joby are house mice, used to coming out at night to nibble on crumbs in the house while avoiding the cats. After being caught in a box trap, they are released in the state forest, and they're expected to know how to survive. They've never been outside. Why would you think I can survive here? I, have, I know nothing. Early on, they encounter Zolian, the oldest mouse in the forest, who helps them adjust and survive. Soon they are doing well and enjoying all the forest has to offer, and soon they are maturing. Joby has found a female mouse who wants to be his partner, and Violet faces the fact that they are going to be living apart. Her friendship with Zolian is strong, though they know Zolian will not be around forever. Predator and prey, food and shelter, life and death are aspects of wildlife that is not ignored. Change will come for all. Revisit of the original Treasure Island, Zane and his friends Kiko and Jack are searching for treasure in Manhattan, just across the river from Queens, where they live. They have a map given to Zane by the old sea captain who was living in their boarding home and died of a stroke. They face a strong gang, gang of skateboarders who want to steal the treasure and a man claiming to want to help Zane and his friends. During the search, the reality of slavery and discrimination is encountered when they visit the African Burial Ground National Monument and realized the graveyard of both free and enslaved black people was built upon for commercial enterprise. It includes a skateboarding trick glossary at the back of the book and a historical note. And it follows, um, well, I shouldn't say that. There's of course differences, but the idea is that the skateboarders are like they're on the ocean for the way they skate and round and, and move and things. With Kit is an adventure overdue. It is so fun, full color graphic novel. Wizkid is a one-eyed cat apprenticed to a wizard, a tad lazy, not interested in going out. Wizkid is appalled when the wizard tells her to accompany the talkative overdue library book back to the library. They have a number of adventures along the way involving a water dragon, a selfish frog, a three-headed bird, and more. Now Wizkid has some friends and a new approach to life. And the book does get back to the library. I know you were worried about it. This is a full color graphic novel and it's book one, obviously, The Journey. Danny, 12, is determined to bring her dog back from the dead, specifically from Hades. Her teacher loans her a book of mythology, which is all she needs to notice the door to Hades is in her neighborhood and she is going there to get Pirate, her dog, back. Her younger brother, Sammy, follows her and is charmingly unafraid of anyone, even Cerebus. She chooses Odysseus for her guide and while there and he is both, both flattered, he is wily, and stunned. She's looking for a dog really. Book one ends with Hades having kidnapped Sammy. So book two better hurry up. In the summer of 1983, Molly, 11, it's the summer after fourth grade, and her younger brother Wally missed their mother who left with another man. Their father is becoming a couch potato with a part-time job and has been letting the house go. Now Molly is outside ready to test her newest Rube Goldberg project and Wally has his finger up his nose as usual. When a giant robot appears, picks up Wally and swallows him. <laughs> Wally, her dog Daryl, her cat Crank, and her chameleon Don Carlos all spring into action to chase after the robot and rescue Wally. There is quite an adventure ahead in the forested hills behind their house. And book two, Molly and the Mutants, came out in August. I haven't seen it yet. Another full color graphic novel. This is also based on this author's webcomic. A colony of house mice have been searching for food and possibly for a new place to live since the humans are gone from the neighborhood or small town they live in. Wix is a scout going out every day trying to find food for the colony. Wild cats are a constant danger, but he is quick and clever. Pict is the head mouse's Orem's daughter, and she is also clever. A faction of the colony want to leave for the city, imagining humans and their food will be there. Orem wants more information about conditions in the city before they all go there. Rumors abound and some mice and rats are only looking out for themselves. Others care about everyone in the colony. There are also other animals that make an appearance from time to time. A moose named Atlas, a hungry pack of wolves, a possum, three fox sisters, they're the witches, and more. 
This is also good for middle school age readers if you are looking to have a carryover book. Book one of The Legends of Lotus Island, The Guardian Test. Plum has lived on Little Island in the Santipop Archipelago all her life. The only other people there are Grandma and Grandpa. Now she is leaving to go to Lotus Island to study at the Guardian Academy and hopefully become a guardian. It seems impossible. Plum has trouble with her studies, and unlike the other students, she hasn't even an inkling of any animal shape she might be intending to change into. She should be discovering this within her first month. If she doesn't, if she cannot change into an animal shape by the end of the month, she is out. A combination of boarding school, magic, trying your best to be to no avail, and a variety of students make up the class, each with their own idiosyncrasies. It has humor and heart and also includes occasional black and white illustrations. Book two, Plum discovers that her power, or one of her powers, is to enhance other guardians' powers. Now, Plum and some of her friends are sent to Botox, Bokati Island to work with the guardian master M for their field study assignment. The issue is someone or something is taking away the huge Bokati, Bokati tree. Only a few are missing so far, but they are precious to all islands and must be preserved. Plum is worried about the trees and still also about her powers. Kirkus says, a fun, magical journey featuring a relatably conflicted protagonist. So this is two books. I'm not sure how many are going to be in the series or when the next one will come out. This was also published in late 2022. Mott finds a cute white puppy in a trash bin and then learns that he is Ferris, the mythical wolf who will eat the moon and bring the world to an end, Ragnarok style. She has mm. already vowed to protect him. This is a dilemma. With the help of a Valkyrie, Thruti, they continue to protect the pup while watching the world slowly fall to pieces. Is there a way to protect the pup and save the world? Mott will do whatever it takes. Punicorn is so fun! <laughs> Love this. It's a full-color graphic novel. Punicorn, a trainee cadet and the smallest and clumsiest unicorn of the Chosen Ones, an elite troop of heroic unicorns, is left behind to defend the Uni Palace and save the land of Carbuncle. With his new friends, Wheeze the Dragon and a quite strong dung beetle, Pooh, they are off to save the day. See his two friends there. And, and Pooh has his bowl of dung with him. Lots of fun with colorful illustrations. Readers will root for the trio. Book two will be Punicorn and the Princess of Thieves. That's advertised in the back of the book, but I don't know when that's going to come out. And I'm going to have my eye out for that because I. This is a full color graphic novel as well. Grace, 12, lives with her mom, Evelyn, on a space station and finds her life a little boring. Her ba, Kendra, flies a cargo ship from planet or moon to other planets or moons and is only home occasionally. This time, Grace is traveling with her ba to Titan, a moon of Saturn, and Grace can't wait to see some of the sights, especially the Kraken Mar, the largest known body of liquid on its surface. But Kendra doesn't have time for Grace and she won't let Grace help with anything even though she helps her, home, her mom at home all the time. Kendra says the ship is delicate and she has a particular way of doing things. Things come to a head when Grace finds a way to visit Kraken Mirror without Kendra, tagging along with students on a school trip. She falls asleep and is left behind until she wakes up and calls for help. Now she is in deep trouble and her boss ship isn't flying right. Evelyn is on the way to help. After some hard feelings on everyone's part, the ship is fixed, as is the rift between the three of them. Ma and Grace plan again for a better trip together next time. Now we'll talk about some nonfiction books. The paperback of this book came out in March of 2023. The book came out earlier than that. It's told in graphic novel format, black and white art with one additional cover that color that varies from chapter to chapter. A biography of the first modern environmentalist. This tells of his birth in Dunbar, Scotland, his love of animals and the outdoors there, and then his family's move to Wisconsin, where he was expected to help build the house, a barn, and not go exploring in the area. After he was accidentally blinded for a while, he went on a walk for a thousand miles, that was his goal, to see all he could, and he soon became a voice for the preservation of the wilderness. His words and deeds continue to inspire people to explore the, explore the natural world. It's, it moves right along and it's very interesting. This is great fun too. This is a pick your path book. The reader 
the reader has to choose a team, the type of craft their team will use, and where they will begin their search. In this book, of course, they're looking for a giant squid. The emphasis is on the people and the hard work they do with a bit of science thrown in. Some searches will be successful, some will not, and those will take you back to an earlier place in the story so you can try again. I think that kids will be interested in this and hope, hoping they find the giant squid right away, but they'll have a lot of fun looking through the book. A brief biography of Tom Crean, who I had never heard of before. Tom Crean accompanied explorations of the Antarctic three times. He was on the Discovery, the Terra Nova, and the Endurance, and contributed to each expedition. From being caught on an ice floe with some companions, he leaps to a cliff and climbs up it to go for help. To being one of five men chosen by Shackleton to sail 800 miles over rough seas to South Georgia Island to get help for all the others, Tom Crean was someone you wanted with you on an expedition. Hmm. He was. Yeah, I've heard of those other people you mentioned, but not him. That'd be cool yeah. to learn about. Hmm. Very interesting. And you know, animals can have adventures too. <laughs> this book includes 10 animals that travel, more or less. The first two page spread of each animal is a map of where that animal travels with information included in boxes on the page. The second two page spread gives more details about the animals, what they eat, their average height and weight, along with some information pertinent to that animal. animal. For example, how emperor penguins take care of their eggs and chicks. They're colorful illustrations with tidbits of information that will appeal to young readers. I have a few teen titles. Look, I'm not that far over time. <laughs> um, early Japan, this takes place in early Japan. The, the family is everything to twins Kai and Kishi. They are the newest divers in their family and their parents support their pearl diving efforts. But one day Kishi is swallowed by a ghost whale and Kai is determined to do what the sea god Benzatine requests in order to save her sister. It will not be easy. This is told as a myth, and this adventure will keep readers on the edge of their seats. This is another full color graphic novel. Paul is stuck visiting his older brother, Theo, in Taiwan for two weeks. Theo loves Taiwan, but Paul is not interested. He sits on the couch and plays video games with his friends in the United States. One day, his brother, Paul, is going to be gone overnight. His brother, um, Theo is going to be gone overnight, and Paul promises to be safe. Still, a friend texts, texts him to go to a computer store to buy an item not available in the U.S. He follows the GPS on his phone to the store and finds out the product is for little kids. Bah! He narrowly avoids being hit by a scooter, falls, and his phone lands in some water. It doesn't work anymore. How will he get back to his brother's place? He can't follow the GPS anymore. Fortunately, he encounters Beijing, a local young lady who spent some time in England. She offers to let him ride her scooter with her while making deliveries, and maybe he will recognize something. And over the course of the day, he sees and experiences a lot that Taiwan has to offer. He has a new opinion of the country. Another full color graphic novel. Now, Haley is high, high school, loves gothic romances, and she soon finds herself in the middle of one. On her way home from school, Haley sees a man in the river and she saves him. Somehow they ended up in now they end up in another dimension, his dimension. Willow Weed Manor has an infernal device that is supposed to keep the dimensions in line, but sometimes they get a crack and it leaks. The brothers are there to maintain and repair the device. Montague, Lawrence, and Cuthbert. It is getting worse, and Montague escaped the dimension to find help. He got Haley. Humorous, dangerous, and over the top, readers will enjoy the storyline and Haley's determination to help. Kirkus says, a delightfully a delightfully spirited adventure. And as you can see, the rabbit's attacking and she has her umbrella. This is just one of the things that they face trying to save all the dimensions. Coral, 14, and her cousin Issa, 13, are more like sisters since their mothers and sis are sisters and their fathers are brothers. Now the cousins will be spending the next four months apart. Coral's parents are taking her with them, sailing around the islands of Indonesia to continue their research. But after a tidal wave capsizes their boat during the night, Coral is now all alone living on an island. She was sleeping on deck and had time to put on a life jacket and grab the survival kit, tossing life jackets to her parents before the wave hit. It is up to her to remember the things her father taught her and to continue to survive while hoping for rescue. Told in alternating chapters, first from Coral's point of view and then from Issa's, this is an adventure Coral never wanted. 
full color graphic novel, going from homeschooling to eighth grade of middle school in October is quite a shock for Zoe. That's kind of an adventure. Fortunately, she has created an app that will help her be cool, she hopes. She has read the books and seen the movies about middle school that could curl your toes. She wants to be ready. But the app has some issues. In spite of the app, Zoe makes a couple of friends who are excited to help her refine the app. They can see the potential. What new middle school student wanted, wouldn't want an app that would help, help ease the transition? Things are going to get more complicated. Another wonderful book, memoir of a three-week school trip to Europe in 1989, the summer after eighth grade. In middle school, Dan learned to be quiet, small, and invisible. Then one day at the end of a school assembly, Dan was unexpectedly asked, or rather forced, to give his speech as a practice for the speech tournament. It was a poem by A.A. A. A. Milne. He was ridiculed. Then he took the three-week school trip to Europe. Quiet at first, he slowly begins to have fun with some of the other students and actually enjoying the trip. He does get lost in the middle of the night in France, but manages to steal a bike and find his way home. He is not proud of stealing the bike. Perkis says, full of laughter and sentiment, this is a nudge for readers to dare to try some new things. And um, in the back of the book, it explains how he had kept in contact with one of the other people on the trip, a girl, and that she, years later, still had the letters and things that from that trip that really helped him with his memory of this. It is still fiction, but it's very much based on his trip to France. But in a fantasy world likely based on Thailand, Sai is trying to make something of her life. She is an assistant to the most famous map maker of the land and goes along with him on a trip to chart the unknown lands and seas of the South. Her secret is that she has no breeding, and that is what makes or break, breaks people in her society. Others on the trip have secrets too, and some can cause danger and damage to others. An adventure just to discover not only the new lands, but also to learn what one is made of. And this is a Newberry Honor book. And it's good for upper elementary ages too. A full color graphic novel. Atana is a mermaid and has lived alone by her island all her life. One night, Ren, a firebird, arrives and befriends Atana. It has been hundreds of years since a firebird has landed on Earth and they are considered valuable. Atana embarks on an adventure that takes her and the firebird to strange new islands and entangles them with a powerful yet secretive witch queen. Is the witch queen a help or is she a threat? There's only one book for nonfiction for teens. This is an epic family road trip to Mexico to bring his grandfather back to, you, to, to the US. It is full of heart, humor, identity, and life. The family buys an old Winnebago and still needs a couple of older kids to ride in the, in the pickup truck and follow behind them. There are many adventures with border guards, roadside attractions, bad haircuts, Mexican stores, and getting reacquainted with family members. It is both hilarious and heartrending. A few fiction books for older readers. This is only available in paperback. Seven teens, some members of the high school basketball team, and some are cheerleaders are left on a deserted island when the small plane they were in crashed. Told from Haley's point of view, it isn't long before changes in relationships between the teens are obvious. Um, kind of a Lord of the Flies type of thing. Then unusual, somewhat scary things start happening. One teen falls off a large rock and claims he was pushed. The crash is the day after the end of the tour party where something happened. The reader doesn't find out what that was until the end of the book. It does include drinking and sexual situations. It's, the School Library Journal says it is an exciting tale of desert survival, desert island survival, and becomes a shrewd commentary on women's survival in a patriarchal society. It's a riveting choice for most collections. This was a real thinker and also an adventure. It's sci-fi. Jessica, 17, is irked at her parents. They have been gone for six years doing research while Jessica lived on Earth with her grandparents. Now they want her to teleport to a different planet to live with them while they conduct research there. In this world, teleportation means her body's details are in the computer and the technicians print a new, new body for her at the new location and fill it with her abilities and memories. Her old body on Earth is destroyed once the new body is functioning. As long as you are in the computer system, you need never die. Once you begin to having experiences again, you need to save the new stuff in the computer or that will be lost if you are teleported again. 
When she first arrives on the new planet, everything is in disarray with blood on the walls. She sees several graves nearby. She soon learns that she is an extra. The first Jessica to be teleported to the new planet is still around and she has been traumatized by what happened after she got there. Something went wrong with the teleportation device and Jessica's father came out wrong. He was combative and uncommunicative and he injured some people, killed some people and is still somewhere on the planet. The two Jessicas and the captain's son, Duncan, are also still on the planet. Can they survive? A freaky that story. sounds like a sci-fi horror novel. <laughs> yeah, 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 a little bit. <laughs> Um, this is a near future story that takes place in Seattle. The four members of Jericho, Han, Jack, Ziaz, and Spider work together to solve puzzles sent by other groups. Each of them has a specific skill and they all work together to solve the puzzles. Now, however, there is a puzzle set out by the ultimate group, the Order, and all the teams want to be the first to solve it. Some dirty tricks, they're not allowed, but they happen. Some second guessing and a brief falling out between team members keeps the readers on edge. Booklist says this echo thriller packs a mighty punch. There is a heads up, and I've got to give you the spoiler. Some of the police are co-conspirators behind a plan to make false insurance claims, along with some other illegal stuff. So I just want you to know that. And now we're just going to do one quick stop at an older, uh, a series book, actually. It's not older. This is the book six, right? Yes. And it's also a full color graphic novel. While continuing to explore the into, oh, this is um, what is it? Early chapter books size. They're continuing to explore the entire farm. P, B, and J are supposed to bring back a new exciting thing. J finds a pretty pebble, but a big pumpkin takes it away from him. His friends stand up with him as they confront the bully, but then even bigger pumpkins stop by and bully the bully. J stands up for the pumpkin, and pretty soon the three of them are coaching him to help him win the pumpkin race. Can he do it? He's not very big compared to the other pumpkins. That's my list. So thank you. All right. Um, okay, leave that slide up there now uh, for a bit. Um, all right. Thank you, Sally. Uh, um, anybody have any questions, comments, or uh, thoughts on any of the books or any titles you want to share that you think um, would be good for the summer reading program next year? The adventure begins at your library. I love this um, uh, theme uh, because it, it can be so many things can be adventure. Um, yeah. And, you know, sometimes it, it's great to have themes that are very focused and so you can really, you know, zoom in on, oh, this is exactly what this is all about. It's about the ocean or whatever. But this is nice that anything can be an adventure and it can really attract and interest um, uh, children and teens with all sorts of um, things that they might be, you know, might catch their attention. It can be a mystery, it can be a science fiction, it can be any, any genre. Yeah, so we, I'm excited about it, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, Sally, for um, your ideas and, and uh, book titles. As, as Sally said at the beginning, this is not every single title that's out there. Um, it's just the one she came across and added to her list. There's gonna be lots more that you'll find too. <laughs> um, but hopefully this will help get you started on um, your, if you haven't already been working on planning, I know a lot of libraries already are <laughs> on their summer reading for next year. Um, we got some thanks coming in. Thanks. Great books as always. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. All right. I am going to pull presenter control back to my screen um, and I'll show you here. There we go. Um, for those of you that didn't, that came in, um, after we had started up, I was gonna show again how you can get to Sally's list of these titles. Um, the, so with the recording, when it's, um, when it's posted, it should be by the end of the day tomorrow, you'll have um, this uh, video, recording of this, um, posted to our YouTube channel, a link to Sally's slides, which had the book covers, but we'll also have a link to her hand, or her um, title, her list of all the books with, you know, um, author, title, publisher, et cetera. And you can get to that from our Library Commission website. Um, and she showed this at the beginning, but I'm gonna show it here. You just type in handouts, that comes up. First link that comes up is our her Sally's page with all of her handouts, as you can see from previous years as well, for both some reading program sessions, new children's books, and new teen titles. Um, she's already done the new children's books of 2023. The new teen titles is coming up next month. Um, but here's her list of today's, um, the summer reading program titles that she did today. 
So you can go there right now if you want to to get um, this uh, list and see, you know, get the full information you might need for ordering any of these books that you might want to get for your library. But we will have a link to that whoops, when we do get the recording up too, but you can find it there right away. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I said it was recorded and here at the bottom of the list, um, this is our upcoming shows for um, the rest of December and in January and into February. I've got some dates already booked and, and with sessions ready, but here's where our archives are. I'll show you where this will go. Um, most recent ones at the top of the page. So um, today's will be there. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me. We also push that information out on our social media. If, if you look on our site, you'll see we do have a Facebook page that we use um, for Encompass Lives. If you'd like to use Facebook, give us a like. We do reminders, here's a reminder to log into today's show, information about our speakers, and then when recordings are available, we post on here as well. Um, we also post to our um, Twitter and Instagram uh, with NCUMP Live as the hashtag for the show, a little abbreviation of our show, so you can check there as well. Um, while we're here on the archives, I'll show you, you can do search here and see if we've done a show on a particular topic you may be interested in. Um, you can search our full show archives or just most recent 12 months if you want something just very current. Um, our show archives, and I'll show you, I'm not going to scroll all the way down here because this is a huge list, but um, this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we're at, what, 16 years, something like that now. But um, so whenever you are watching any of our old archive shows, pay attention to the original broadcast date. They all have the date showing when it was first shown. Um, some of these shows will be great and still stand the test of time and be useful, like all of Sally's reading lists. Those book titles are still probably good books even years later. Um, they just, you know, for some are reading there for a specific uh, theme, but they could be good for anything you want. Um, but some things, some shows may become old, outdated, the information, um, uh, services and, and resources may have changed drastically or no longer exist anymore. So you will find broken links possibly. Um, people may not work at the same library, or the same place where they worked when they um, presented for us. So just pay attention to that original broadcast date whenever you do watch anything in our show archives. All right, so uh, that wraps up for today's show. Next week, it is, oh my gosh, it is the last Wednesday of the month and the last Wednesday of 2023. Oh my gosh, <laughs> almost a new year coming. But because it is the last Wednesday of the month, it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Um, the last Wednesday of the month, every month, Amanda Sweet, who is our technology innovation librarian here at the Library Commission, she comes on the show and does a presentation for us about something tech related. Uh, we do techie things other times during the month too sometimes, but you can always depend on Amanda to be here at the very um, end of the month. And next week, she's going to be talking about the tech kits through the mail that we um, service that we have here at the Library Commission. Lots of different technology, robots, uh, virtual reality, uh, programming kits, all sorts of things um, that she um, that we circulate here through Nebraska Li to Nebraska Libraries, and there have been some new things added to the um, program. So if you're interested in trying out any of this new technology, take a look at that safe website, Tech Kits Through the Mail, um, but also attend next week, sign up for next week's show, where she can tell you about all of the new things that you can borrow through the Library Commission for use at your library. All right, so I don't see any other comments or anything came in, so that's great. We will wrap it up for today. Thank you, everybody, for being here with this morning, with us here this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. <laughs> great list. We will see you back here on, as you can see here, January 24th for the best new teen reads of 2023, new titles from last year. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, for anyone who came in late, um, Sally does these three sessions for us usually near the end of the year, summer reading program for next year, like she did, as she did today, new teen reads, which is coming up in January. And she did best new children's books in November and the recording is already up um, there. So you can go and check that one out if you are looking for some teen titles. All right, thank you everybody. Thanks Sally. And hopefully sure. we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.